post September 18, 2021. I ask unanimous consent to submit these into the record. Without objection, uh, Ms. Bush. St. Louis and I thank you, Chairman, for convening this hearing today. My plea today is with my colleagues on this committee and with the American public watching. Take a walk in the shoes of an 18-year-old girl from St. Louis, a Black girl, a girl who is uninsured and suffering from asthma, a health condition she likely got from the burning of fossil fuels in her community. She can't afford rent. She works a minimum wage job, and her friends consider her fortunate because at least she has a job. But even in this job, she is making less than her white counterparts. She is also nine weeks pregnant, feeling alone and afraid. That girl is me. We don't live in a world that nurtures and cares for black girls like me. And if the world doesn't care about a black girl like me, then what will happen to our black babies who grow up to be black, grow up to become black children and black adults? Professor Bridges, you talk about the high mortality rates among black pregnant people. In a world in which Roe is overturned, what harms do abortion bans pose for black pregnant people? We will be coercing them to give birth, which is a dangerous proposition, which is something that should be embarrassing to the United States. The United States um, is, is one of the, it's actually the only industrialized nations um, that has a, a maternal mortality rate that is increasing. Um, the racial disparities in, mortal, in, in, in maternal mortality mean that three to four times as many black people should expect to die while attempting uh, a birth. And so to coerce birth, which is what abortion bans and regulations do, is to coerce black people to engage in a task that is dangerous to them. Thank you, Professor Bridges. Let me ask you another question. Some scholars have compared this bounty system to the Fugitive Slave Acts laws that offered a bounty for capturing and returning fugitive slaves and provided for fines up to uh, $1,000 against anyone who helped a fugitive enslaved person. I agree. Can you describe the white supremacist roots that link SB8 and the Fugitive Slave Acts? Absolutely. So the Fugitive Slave Act um, is a, is a effort to ensure that people of color, um, black people specifically, um, were human property. Um, and that chattel slavery as an institution um, would be perpetuated and that uh, the, the people who purported to own those black people would not lose their property. Um, and so essentially the Fugitive Slave Act allowed others to control the bodies, private actors, right? To control the bodies of other human beings. That is precisely what is happening in Texas today in deputizing private citizens um, to, to seek a bounty um, on other private citizens we are allowing private citizens to control, terrorize, regulate the bodies of other human beings. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that, Professor Bridges. Dr. Moayadi, SB8 has been law for 64 days, and in those 64 days, clinics have closed and certain resources have been permanently erased. What are the permanent impacts of SB8 on people of color and people living in poverty? Thank you for that question. And Representative Bush, thank you again for sharing your story. It, it moves me and um, every single time, and it is the core of why I provide this care. Um, it When I first started working in abortion care and um, realized the desperate need for women of color to take care of other women of color, that is what inspired me to become a physician and to provide abortion care in Texas. So this issue is very dear to my heart. Um, this ban is disastrous for communities of color, especially the ones that I serve. Many of the people I take care of have never left the North Texas area. Um, so traveling to Oklahoma City even is very challenging for them. Last week, I took care of someone from the coast area in Texas that was coming to Oklahoma City, but because they had never left the state either, their friend made them a reservation in a hotel in Tulsa instead of Oklahoma City because they didn't really understand where to go. And so that's just one small story of how um, challenging and insurmountable getting out of the state for care can be. What is truly frightening for me is what we're going to see in the next eight, seven to eight months as far as maternal mortality in the communities that I serve. The people, yes. Thank you, thank you. 
Um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, what I want to make clear here today as the first black woman and nurse to serve the people of Cong people of Missouri in Congress is that the path to overturning Roe will be devastating for all people, especially black people. Abortion care will still exist like it did before this landmark decision, but it will be deadly. In a world where black pregnant people die four times more often than white pregnant people during childbirth, in a world where black women are disproportionately evicted from their homes, in a world where black trans women are more likely to turn to sex work for survival, failing to legislate reproductive justice is a death sentence for our neighbors, our co-workers, our families. We cannot afford to go back on our reproductive rights. We must legislate love. We must legislate justice for Black girls and non-binary folks and guarantee reproductive rights for everyone. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. This concludes today's